day, enthusiastic learners. Welcome to General Mathematics class. I am Teacher Sol, your majestic maestro. Since we review function in our previous video, now let us try to discuss real-life application of function. The topic of this video is real-life situations involving functions. Our learning objective at the end of the video lesson, you should be able to represent real-life situations using functions, solve problems involving functions. I hope you will be able to appreciate more the importance of studying functions at the end of this video. The essential question that needs to be answered in this video. What are some of the real-life applications of functions. But before we have some more of some applications, let us discuss first what do you need to know about function. Functions often used to model real life situation. A function model is used to show the relationship between two or more quantities. In everyday life, many quantities depend on one or more variables. Let us have an example. Water bill depends on the water consumption. Speed is a function of time and distance travel. Revenue is based on the price and the number of products sold. Let us have now an application of functions. Functions can be applied in business. Let us discuss cost, revenue, and profit functions. These three concepts use the idea of linear function. What is a cost function? Total cost refers to the expenses for the production of product, and in the total cost, it contains two. We have the variable cost and fixed cost. When we say variable cost, it is expense of producing or making one product this cost depends on the quantity consumed and varies depending on the volume of the production. It includes expenses of raw materials, direct labor, and etc. While fixed cost refers to the expense that remains the same no matter how much product is manufactured or sold. This cost does not change with the quantity on production process. It includes expenses for rent, utilities and wages of employees, loan payments, and a lot more. This value remains the same no matter how much product manufactured or sold. And for its formula on function, we have C of X is equal to the variable cost times X, where X refers to the number of products plus the revenue function, we have the total revenue, it is the amount received for the sale of goods or payments for the services rendered. So to get the revenue, we will just have the product of price per unit times the number of units. R of X is equal to PX. Profit function. In profit function, we have a total profit. It is the money earned after paying the cost of producing and selling products or services. And to get the profit function, you will just have the revenue function minus the total cost. P of X is equal to R of X minus C of X. With this, let us now apply the three concepts. For example, the Sipnayan Club is trying to raise funds for the outreach activity by selling Greyhound to the SHS students. The cost to make each Greyhound ball is 10 pesos and is being sold for 18 pesos. The club has already spent 680 in paying for the use of utilities. With this given problem, let us list down all the given values. 
it says to the problem that the cost to make Graham ball is 10 pesos. With this, it gives us the variable cost. Next, we have 18 pesos. It says here the Graham ball is being sold for 18 pesos. That gives us the price is equal to 18. Last value, we have 680 pesos. It says here it is used for paying the utilities, which is the fixed cost. With all these values, we can now answer letter A. What is the cost function? Based on our discussion a while ago, when we say cost function, it is given by C of X is equal to the B X plus F. The X here stands for the unit of a product, which is the Graham ball. So we will simply replace it. We have C of X is equal to B, which is 10X, plus F, which is 680. With this, we have cost function. C of X is equal to 10X plus 680. Next question. What is the revenue function? Based on the discussion, the revenue function R of X is equal to the price of the product times X. So based on our given, the price is 18. Therefore, we have R of X is equal to 18X. So this is now the revenue function. question what is the profit function to get this we need the concept of revenue and profit function since profit function is given by P of X is equal to R of X minus C of X we have to substitute the function that we answered a while ago so we have 18 X the revenue minus the cost, which is 10x plus 680. Keep in mind that we need to put a parenthesis for the second function since it is binomial. So, meaning we have to distribute the negative sign for each term. Without putting a parenthesis, you might get different answer and that is wrong. So we have now eighteen X minus ten X minus six hundred eighty. Combine the like terms eighteen X minus ten X, it will give you P of X is equal to eight X minus 680 as your profit function. Fourth question, how much is the total profit if 60 Graham balls were sold? Since we are looking at to find the total profit, we were using the profit function here. In the previous item, we have P of X is equal to 8X minus 680. Since it says to the question, there are 60 Graham balls were sold. We need to let X be 60. So we have P of 60 is equal to 8 times 60 minus 680. Multiplying 8 and 60, the result is 480. Then minus 680, it will give you negative 200. It means to say that there is a loss of 200 pesos in selling 60 Graham balls. And that is the meaning of negative here. It means to say that you should be able to sell more than 60 pieces of Graham balls in order for you not to have a loss but a profit. Next, we 
X? How much is the total cost if 150 Graham bolts were sold? Here, we ask for the total cost. Therefore, we have to use the cost function. C of X is equal to 10X plus 680. Since we're talking about 150 Graham bolts, let X be 150. We need to substitute 50 to X. C of X is equal to 10 times 150 plus 680. Multiplying 10 to 150, the answer is 1,500. Plus 680 gives us 2,180. The meaning of this is that the total cost is 2,180 if 150 Graham bolts were sold. Letter F. How many Graham bowls must be made and sold to break even? Here, when we say break even, it means to say that no profit, no loss. So with that, we have to let P of X be 0. To identify of X to 0, we can now find the number of Graham bowls that has to be made and sold for us to have break even meaning you did not earn or you did not lose anything so using p of x is equal to 8x minus 680 substitute 0 to p of x so we have now 0 is equal to 8x minus 680 here we can transpose 680 to the left side so that it will become a positive 680. What is the meaning of this? Divide both sides by 8, then 600 divided by 8, it will give us 85. So, x is equal to 85. Graham poles must be sold to break even. Other functions. There are some real-life situations that can be modeled and sold using the other functions. Let us have an example. The height in feet of the cold into the air is given by the function h of t is equal to negative 60 t squared plus 64 t, where t is the number of seconds elapsed since the ball was hit. The question here is, how long does it take for the ball to hit the ground? Since we're talking about the time, we we'll let t to be unknown. Next, let h of t represent the height of a golf ball throw up into the air as a function of time t for the ball to hit the ground. Since we're looking for the time for the ball to hit the ground, we let h of t be 0, meaning the height of a ball when it's already on the ground is 0. Using the function in the problem, we have 0 is equal to negative 16 t squared plus 64 t. Observe that the given has a common factor, which is negative 16t. So we can, we can have now d, 0 is equal to negative 16t, quantity of t minus 4. We're done on factoring common monomial. Next, let each factor be equal to 0. So we have 0 is equal to negative 16t. Divide both sides by negative 16. Cancel. It will give you t is equal to 0. At the right side, the second, t minus 4 is equal to 0. Transpose negative 4 to the right side, so we have t is equal to 
you can see we have two values t is equal to 0 and t is equal to 4 since we cannot accept 0 second for the ball to hit the ground after throwing up to the air so our answer here is t is equal to 4 meaning it will take 4 seconds for the ball to hit the ground another example the velocity watermelon if you want it to hit the ground at 100 meter per second. Based on the problem, we are looking for each. So 100 meter per second is the value of the velocity. So it means to say that the watermelon will drop at 510.20 meters to hit the ground at 100 meters per second. As you have seen, functions are used in numerous real-life situations. Hence, it is merely of great importance to give attention. I hope you will be able to follow every single problem. If you learned from this video, please don't forget to subscribe and press the notification bell for more updates for the upcoming video lesson. Please do like, comment, and share this video. Thank you and